Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris Michaels. I am the director of communications here at SimSpace. I am joined uh, with Pete Hay, who is our lead instructor here at SimSpace for our first Demo Tuesday. So thank you all for joining in. Today, we're hoping to give you a, a broad overview of the SimSpace uh, cyber risk management platform. And I'm going to hand things over to, to Pete. But before we do, if there's anybody joining us today that has questions about using a cyber range, our risk management platform overall, feel free to add those into the chat module there on the screen. We will be sure to answer them as we go along, either via chat or in our Q&A period at the end. If there are questions that you have regarding a specific point of content that we're uh, uh, demonstrating today, we'll try to answer as many of those questions as we go along. Otherwise, we'll hold them all for the end for the Q&A. With that, I will pass things over to Pete. Pete, how's it going? Doing well. Thanks for the introduction, Chris. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to share with you guys today the uh, the SimSpace Cyber Range platform. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do in the platform that are very cool, and uh, it's uh, really exciting to be the person who gets to demo it to you. So let me go ahead and share my screen for you all. And so the, um, what we're going to do now is, for, first of all, you're seeing the home page of the SimSpace portal. And uh, from here, this is your general dashboard that gives you a overview of the events that are upcoming for you, your active events, anything you've completed in the past, as well as some content that's been featured by your organization's manager. Uh, as you can see here, we have some emerging threats, learning plans that are available, um, in particular, one on PwnKit that was just released uh, just a couple of days ago, actually. Um, next, we'll talk about some of the capabilities uh, in the platform. So um, we're going to go to our, our application selector. And now you see our options. We have home. Uh, next, you have events. That would be similar to what you saw on the dashboard, the, uh, the completed and upcoming uh, events. We do actually break events down into separate categories for live action events and structured content events. I'll, show, I'll give you examples of both of those as we go through the demo. Uh, next, we have the content application. Inside the content application, that is where uh, all the behind the scenes work to uh, build the ranges, to build uh, content modules, which get rolled into structured content plans and then deployed as part of those structured content events that you heard me mention just a minute ago. Uh, ranges, clone sources, and uh, are also built in there. And um, and then all of the above is managed through the through the content application as well. Next, we have training. That's all about presenting training that you've built for yourself or your organization. Uh, personnel is something that I'll spend some time on later. That shows um, how you can build out for your organization learning paths. How you can manage assessments for new hires, or um, and even manage uh, recruiting and uh, assessing the capabilities of people who are in the uh, in the hiring pipeline. Uh, next, we have product scoring, which is something under development where we'll be able to use the cyber range against automated attacks built into the range and compare that, uh, compare the performance of different uh, DCO stacks to make a determination of which ones perform better under which circumstances and in an environment very similar to our customers' uh, live action, um, their, their, um, uh, their, their live environment. Uh, next, we have risk. That's again a tool that that we've developed for manage for organizations who want to use a cyber range to manage risk to their organization. And um, then we have analytics and administration of all of the above. So right now, I'm going to kick it over to events, and I'm going to bypass the well. No, let's go into the events. So you can see there are a large number of structured content events and live action events available for someone. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is go back home because it's the easiest way. Use my dashboard and access the live action event for this demo that I've set up for you. And what we're going to do is jump right into the live action event. Now, you'll note I have cheated a little bit here uh, because as the uh, unofficial motto of the Navy SEALs states, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. And I assure you, I'm trying. So the uh, we've bypassed some of the event design setup, uh, blue and red recce events, and we've moved right into execution. But uh, in the event lobby, any pre-briefing documents we might want to have displayed, you can see the teammates are here. Um, you can observe your roles. Once again, just a dashboard to give you an understanding of the overview of the event, who's in it, and what's going on. But let's jump into the most interesting part, which is, in my opinion, the, uh, the overview of what the network looks like. So I'm going to use the network map. So here you can see 
the um, the map of the range that we have deployed out for you today. Um, you could do a lot of customization and uh, moving this view around so you can see. Um, directly from here, uh, one of my favorite features is the ability to grab one of these uh, virtual machines and access it directly. So we'll go ahead and pick one of the accounting virtual machines and jump directly into it. Now you see I have actually a number of virtual machines up and running right now. And this is for the purpose of demonstrating to you one of the neatest features in the SimSpace CyberRange platform, which is our user emulation. So um, it may shock you that I'm not doing all these things on my own, furiously typing over here while I'm presenting. This is our user emulation platform generating real traffic um, of user behavior in range. Um, as Chris mentioned, I'm the lead for instruction at SimSpace, and I've done a lot of time in a lot of classrooms teaching uh, threat hunting or analytics or what have you. One of the biggest challenges when you give someone a experience in a hands-on course is giving them a carefully curated content without it being contrived. And oftentimes the biggest downfall of those courses is the inability to generate legitimate traffic that you essentially have very little quote unquote legitimate traffic to filter out until you start finding the bad traffic. The SimSpace user emulation capability makes it very simple to generate large volumes of user behavior inside a range environment with little to no effort on your part, especially as you can see, uh, look mom, no hands. So. Um, it's a huge feature of the platform, uh, as you can understand, uh, as you can hear, I'm understandably proud of it, and um, I really enjoy getting a chance to show it off. Uh, the next thing we'll take a look at is um, the attack campaigns. So another feature that we've added is the idea of taking a, an adversary action, quantifying it as an inject, uh, very similar to what you might hear as playbooks or TTP playbooks, um, and then deploying it in an automated fashion inside the range environment. Why do we want this? Well, um, how else do you get to reduce the overhead of a range experience? Um, just like you saw with user emulation, that's a, that's a big effort on our part to reduce the um, administrative overhead on, on range capability. So the next thing that we did is we built the red team. So uh, red team capabilities into our platform in in form of these automatic injects. So I've got three of them built here, um, reconnaissance by an insider threat, beaconer deployment scenario, data exfiltration. You'll note these are not scheduled. These are, um, these are capabilities that I've brought in and I've set up to be run manually as we do the, um, the platform experience, as we do the range experience. So um, I'll give you a demo of that later, but it is really, really easy. If I wanted to add a new one, there's a whole catalog of capabilities that I could just quite literally three clicks and there's a new capability added in. And if I wanted to schedule it, I could actually build it out so that as my team is participating in this range experience, they have a series of adversary campaigns kicking off periodically through the event. Uh, next, next thing I'd like to demonstrate for you, I already showed you the network map. Um, user emulation is once again, very easy to configure. We can come in and manage the runs. And uh, I know it seems like a lot going on, but it's just a few clicks to turn off, uh, to start, stop, pause, or resume user emulation. Um, and then one of the really fun things that we have is built in is called Defender. And here is where um, the, the participants in the range have essentially a ticketing system, similar to what you might find in Redmine or Jira, where they can report their defensive actions as they progress. Um, these defender actions can then be correlated to attack actions that have been automatically injected. So we, and that provides our white teams are the people who are scoring and evaluating the exercises, a method of saying, this is a threat action that took place at this time, which we're tracking through the platform. And here we see in the defender logs an IOC detected by the defensive team, and we can correlate those together as well. Um, we have the threat actions themselves. This is where I would actually deploy out a campaign and I'll do it because I think it's fun. So what we'll do is I'll take the APT40 campaign, which ran earlier, I'll reset it. Always love seeing those big yellow warnings as we kick things off and I've started the campaign. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the network impact and I'm gonna keep talking as you see um, the APT40 
um, this one right here, actually taking place live as we're continuing to talk. Um, so I'm going to maintain a filibuster for a couple of minutes and fill this space. So um, let me bring up a couple other things while that runs in the background. You can see I've turned off the Beaconer deployment that we saw deployed as one of our other threat injects. You can break this out to see the individual steps that took place, the success or failure of those steps. By the way, the failure of an inject may actually be an indication of success by the defensive team as they hardened a firewall or they um, deployed, I don't know, made changes to group policy to prevent execution or what have you. And so um, it's worth pointing out that just because the threat inject failed, that may be actually a really strong indication that the defensive team has achieved success. So as you can see, the um, the APT40 uh, threat inject is progressing pace, and I will move on. The next thing that we have is a MITRE ATT&CK map out of, and, it, and one of the really neat things about this is it is generated live. So it is a mapping of the MITRE components, or the, the, the MITRE ATT&CK elements that are present within the range. So the TTPs, or depending on how you look at it, the IOC is that are potentially exposed to the actors in the range, they may be able to detect any one of these things. Um, I think this is a wonderful way of being able to quantify the performance of your defensive team in the range. Um, the other thing that I would talk about is um, you can combine this with the defender logs and the um, the performance of your team. So remember how I said we can correlate a um, an attack action with the defender logs. We could then use that to build an overlay where we say, here are the IOCs or here are the TTPs that were detected by your defensive team. And you can build another attack layer navigator, excuse me, MITRE attack navigator layer to show in a different color, here are the blue actions. These are the things detected and then lay that on top of uh, this breakout. And it tells, it shows exactly where success and failure um, or what we might say success and opportunities for improvement where they exist inside your organization. Um, let's see, I mentioned ticket correlation right here. So if I had populated red, uh, blue team tickets, defender logs right there, this would be an opportunity for me to correlate them together. And then we can perform, perform scoring below. I'm going to pause here for just a moment and uh, take a look at some of the comments, see if there's anything we need to answer as we go. Um, I don't see any questions specifically on this. So let's take a step over out of the events and we'll take a look at the personnel option. So for personnel, we have the opportunity to do, there are a large number of things we can do here. Uh, you'll notice that my team has not been well assigned at this moment. They're fulfilling uh, undefined roles, but we'll take a look at the um, learning paths. That's the first place I wanna start. I think learning paths are a wonderful opportunity. And um, I think about it in terms of resource management and personnel management inside a company. Uh, when I say that, it's, there's you hear it regularly on podcasts and conversations and from recruiters and hiring managers how difficult it is to fill the necessary roles inside cybersecurity right now and infosec in general so um i believe one of the great ways to do that is in, illustrated here in learning paths hiring absolutely necessary absolutely critical to make sure that the people with the necessary skills are being brought into your organization but then the other side of that coin is taking the people inside your organization and getting them the necessary skills to fill the needs of the organization going forward. And learning paths are one of the ways that you can do that in this SimSpace, uh, SimSpace platform. So let's take a look at this one. So I created an example learning path for a, uh, for a threat hunter. Um, this would be a great opportunity for someone who has worked in um, defensive cyber operations or maybe um, IT infrastructure who's wanting to take a step forward and start working in a SOC or doing threat hunting, and they're looking to expand the skills that they have. So um, when we take a look at the outline, you'll notice we can create multiple levels. Uh, another way that this could be used is bringing on new hires. Somebody has gone right out of college. They have a degree in cybersecurity. We want to bring them up to the skill level of being a threat hunter uh, as our organization sees it. 
So the first thing we have is orientation, new years are welcome. And you'll note, I can set level requirements for every single, um, every single structured content plan. You remember me mentioning those ear earlier. I'll actually pivot around one more time so you can see under the hood of them a little bit. But these would be structured content plans that we bring in here. The other thing we can do is set level requirements. Since this one's orientation and new years are welcome, I've set a pass threshold of 100%. If you haven't managed to complete orientation, we don't really want you moving on to learning about threat hunting at that point in time. So the next thing we have is our threat hunting level. And here you're seeing another one of the constructs in our content platform, which we call a circuit. Uh, you heard me mention structured content plans, sometimes just shortened down to content. Um, each of these boxes, like the Suricata introduction that you see there with the Meerkat, is an example of a structured content plan. When multiple structured content plans dovetail together to address a single need, we bundle them into a greater concept called the circuit. And so one of the things you can do when adding content into these learning paths, which is really quite easy, I have a circuit right here for boot to root workshops. I'll go ahead and add that in. Now that isn't a good fit for this particular work role, so it won't stay here permanently. But you'll note there are a number of individual workshops, challenges, and labs that are associated with each of these circuits. And so I have, uh, through, I think that was three clicks, been able to add an entire circuit of associated concepts to my learning path. Uh, I'm going to remove this one out of here because it's not a good fit for this particular example. So we have, what do we have? We have Suricata, Suricata Rule Writing, Network Forensics Challenge called Zeeking the Predator which gets bonus points for being a dad joke and being a nerd joke. Uh, and then we have network analyst exercise. Now here's for this, uh, for this learning path, I've built level requirements, not off of every single element in the learning path. Why? Because these circuits are built to challenge you at the end of the circuit to determine, have you learned, uh, have you met your learning objectives for this circuit? Have you learned what's necessary for this skill? And so I've only set level requirements for those structured content plans that serve as the challenge to each of the circuits. So rather than saying everybody has to be get this good a grade or do all of these things, it's a great opportunity for someone who has pre-existing skills to, I don't know, challenge the course. And instead of having to take every single module and sink the time and effort into that, they can simply jump to the challenge, complete it with a pass threshold greater than 75%, and move on to the next part of their learning path. Go back and take a look at that. So that next learning path is sim, uh, sim or seam oriented threat hunting, using uh, threat hunting with IOCs. There's a workshop followed by an exercise. A workshop in our parlance has a great deal of what I call the uh, handrails, the um, the suggestions, hints, examples. Do this, see this, understand that. And then the exercises are where we pull away a lot of the supporting infrastructure, but still give them general guidance. So uh, how would we say this? So an example of threat hunting with IOCs, we would start out by defining an IOC, giving them a very simple example of an IOC, uh, like a domain name, let's say, walking them over to Splunk or Elastic, showing them how to write the search, uh, the discover or query for that IOC and then showing them what results would be indicative of identifying it successfully. For the exercise, we would take away all of that supporting infrastructure and say, okay, maybe give them a hint and say, using Kibana, find this IOC. That would be the exercise. And when we get to the challenges, in the challenge, we don't call out each individual IOC so, so starkly. Instead, there we would say, here is some threat intel. It is up to you to operationalize it and hunt on it and make determinations. And then we ask a series of questions that shows if they have successfully identified the TTPs and behaviors of the attacker in question, and if they've been able to extract uh, information of operational relevance. Uh, and then the last one is the Zeek series. And, um, and so again, you can see we parse network traffic using Zeek, we modify Zeek scripts, um, we do a network analyst walkthrough. So once again, that's more of the end to end. Here are all the things um, I mentioned earlier that in the um, that we start out giving very specific examples of IOCs, and then later we move to passing them more complete threat intelligence products. One of the things we have to walk through is how to turn a threat intelligence product into a more effective hunting playbook, and that's the sort of thing you'd see here. 
So that's what it looks like as we deploy a learning path uh, for in our platform to take the personnel that are already in your organization, that already committed your organization, who want to move into more challenging or um, more interesting, or even just the next phase of their career, learning paths are the method by which that can be done in the SimSpace platform. The next thing I want to demonstrate for you is once again, back in personnel, we have um, candidates and assessments. And I think this is pretty cool. I'm going to jump straight into work role definition because that's worth mentioning. Um, pretty easy to define a work role. I'll show you the one I created here. Um, and this one is created for the express purpose of being able to generate a, uh, an assessment for a new candidate hire. So what I've done is I've chosen the one of the challenges, which we already saw mentioned, as a structured content plan. It exists in the platform as something that could be part of a learning path or it could be individually scheduled for a participant who just wants to challenge themselves in their day to day. And we've added it as a assessment for this particular work role. Um, there are other things that could go into this, other skill sets we could draw in, but I'm keeping this one clean and simple for the example for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, next thing, I come down to assessments and I register a new candidate. I'll just go ahead and do that right now because why not? Um, just to show you how easy it is. We generate a candidate ID. We give a recruiter. We'll make that Pete Hay, who seems to be all over the place, be involved. Post in a, a paste. Well, we'll put in an email address. We'll just say recruiter at company.com. And what role are we interested in assessing for? We'll again say the threat hunter, and we're gonna say the proficiency level is intermediate. And then we set a due date. What this due date does is it lets you send out the link that I'm about to generate for the candidate, um, lets your recruiter send out that link, say, hey, look, anytime in the next two weeks, when you've got two hours free, I want you to sit down and do this, this challenge for yourself. Um, so I'll go ahead and set, I'll just set it for tomorrow. So we'll go ahead and create that candidate. And from here, you can see, um, I'm just gonna copy the link and show you what it looks like for the participant. So I'll pop an incognito window so that you know I'm not logged in or anything crazy like that. Paste in that link and this is what a candidate sees. So uh, you remember me mentioning the difference between live action events and structured content events. This would be an example of a structured content event. And what that means is that while there's a range, your primary interface isn't that range experience. It's a learning management system. And uh, as the range deploys right now, um, in just a moment, you'll see pop up the opportunity to start the event and enter this learning management system. This is what it looks like. Uh, we'll co we commonly call these cards, although technically they're known as tasks. We have two kinds of tasks, information and question tasks. And so what we do is give them an introduction. Why? Well, they're new to this content and we want to walk them through exactly what's going to be necessary, both in the structured content plan and also um, in the um, structured content event. So let's bring that in so you can see. It. So this is what that looks like. And um, from there, the um, they can, they can observe, once again, what the structured content plan looks like, what the learning management software is. And um, so we'll go ahead and hit next. And next, you'll see how they interface with the range. So rather than seeing the overview of the whole range, they get access to a very tightly curated content within the range. Um, and so you see they're walking through what the module looks like and how it exists. Next, we have the actual um, a, a network map, some of the intel, you know, so we can create attachments and throw them into the um, the tasks, a briefing on the scenario, a time frame for the investigation, which is pretty critical, and then some threat intelligence telling you uh, what sorts of TTPs and IOCs may be present in the environment. And from there, they get asked a question. You'll notice up in the top right, they can now open a console. And this console is exactly like what you saw earlier when I went from the network map and opened a console and um, did some tasking on my own um, and demonstrated user and user emulation for all of you. Same kind of console, but the access is more carefully curated for the user experience. So we're gonna bring up Elastic right now. And I've managed to do it just a little bit fast for, for my instance. 
Um, but from here, they'll be able to bounce back and forth between the elastic instance and the questions. And so this one is entered the name of the first compromised host. And now we get to have a challenge repeat to see if you can remember all these things off the top of your head. You'll notice we also have the ability to give hints and it gives you the warning. You only receive partial credit for this response if you choose to do the hint. So I'll do one or two of these. And uh, so this one is, I think it was workstation nine, if I remember correctly, but I'll go ahead and accept the hint and take the, take the hit on the points and submit it. And you'll notice it's not telling me if I succeeded or failed or what have you. But you'll notice the next card, the next task, which I cannot access right now, you notice next is grayed out, actually said, yeah, that was Workstation 9, Site Workstation 9. So now I can, um, you know, if even if I got that wrong, it would give me an opportunity to pivot back to the right thing to work on the next answer, making sure that you're not completely hosed. If you got one answer wrong along the way. Um, let me jump back into the platform. And show you what that look, what that report looks like once someone has completed um, their experience in the range. So you take a look at this. Um, it'll tell you how the candidate did. It generates um, where their competencies are based on the Nice framework, um, and then breaking out by knowledge, skill, ability, and task performance how they performed in the various roles uh, per KSAT. And you'll notice there were not very many participants in this, so I was in the 99th percent the whole percentile the whole time. Um, I assume that you're all proud of me. I know I am as well. Um, that does an excellent job of kind of bringing us back to the platform. And uh, once again, I'm going to take a minute to pivot over to the comments and ask her any questions. Um, so first questions, do we offer on-premises range solutions? Uh, we have a number of range solutions that are available. And uh, on-premises is one of them. It, um, and of course, the downside of the on-prem is that you don't have what we have right now when we have a dislocated workforce and the ability for people to continue to expand their capabilities uh, no matter where they might be around the globe. So I think you'd hear that there's a slight uh, inclination in my tone that I really enjoy the fact that we offer um, off-prem as well or um, SimSpace Cloud. Uh, next question from uh, Amar is, what are the opportunities and challenges of using a cyber range in cybersecurity education and research? Well, Amar, you already heard me mention one of the key ones, which is how do you provide someone a carefully curated experience without making it contrived? And we have a couple of answers to that. I think the first one, which I demoed, was user emulation. Um, by generating uh, enough good traffic or valid traffic or legitimate traffic, uh, it makes the act of hunting, um, can I say more valid, uh, more more valuable for the participant. Um, so that's a really big deal. You know, the other thing that we offer that I should mention is uh, opportunities and challenge. I think this is both is uh, you heard me mention earlier that our customers have us build, um, integrate their tools into the cyber range platform. So when somebody comes to participate at what you saw right there in a structured content event or structured content plan, they get what's in there. So you'll see um, structured content plans and learning paths that include training on Splunk or Elastic or a lot of those uh, more generally available tools. When our customers bring us on board, we integrate their DCO stack. And so when a range exercise is performed for, um, for one of them, Instead of getting uh, instead of getting the opportunity to remember how to do um, uh, Kibana query language or um, something like that, you get to work with the exact dashboards and tools and playbooks that you have available day to day. Um, so I think that's one of the big opportunities. It's also a challenge from a range services standpoint to bring it up and make it feel real. But it's something that we do every day. And the people on our professional services range engineering team are, quite frankly, extraordinary what they do. Um, what else do I want to call out there in terms of education? Um, I, you know, I bring it back to it is how do you, um, the challenges is staying in touch with what you've learned. Um, you know, my background, you'd go, um, you know, two or three times a year, you might get to go to a class. And then um, if you didn't go back into the office and use those skills day to day, you ran the risk of them atrophying. Um, I feel like I should at this point say, but of course not me, um, but that would be a lie. 
the reality is if you don't get hands-on day-to-day experience in in the skills that you're trying to develop they they don't develop at the pace or to the skill level that all of us intend and uh, as you saw with learning paths and our content module in fact i'll bring up content right now um, and show you some of our content catalog um, we have the opportunity here to train for a specific work role let's say i'm interested in blue teaming pick that um, and here are here are a number of these happen to be all structured content plans i don't see any circuits here that that help you maintain like i mentioned that day in day out contact with firewalls um, my background i was a network analyst for many years but i got away from network infrastructure devices and every time i have to go configure a cisco device for building content um, that's a great opportunity to sit down with google and refresh my skills on that well this platform um, gives us the opportunity to stay stuck in on that content day to day. Um, another example is instead of going by work role, we can go back to the content catalog and we could go by a single topic. And one of my favorite topics that we have is emerging threats. Uh, we have a content team and emerging threats content team. And what they do is they look at new and emerging threats and develop content modules that walk you through basically an understanding of it how to deploy it offensively and how to defend against it defensively for each of those, for each of these. So you see a number of recent ones, log for shell or log for J, um, pwn kit, curveball, proxy log on, zero log on, and print nightmare are all in there. So um, this is a great way as those new capabilities come out to remain current, to get exposed to both the capabilities and the IOCs. Um, and um, and to like I said, get st stay stuck in on on those areas of passion for you. Um, I think that concludes it. Unless anybody else has any questions, I will turn it back over to Chris and Kelly for anything you might have. All right. Well, let me wrap that up and say uh, thank you all for your time. I really enjoyed getting the chance to show you some of the things we're doing here at SimSpace. And um, I really, obviously, I'm excited about giving, you know, the the, the employees, the trainees, the students, the uh, the opportunity to generate you know, real world experience, and not just like theoretical or uh, academic um, understanding. Turn it, turn the that knowledge into real skills, ability, and the ability to fulfill specific tasks. So, thank you all very much for your time.